case when we try to defense. They make me do this. Um, can I have a volunteer from the audience, please? during the course of the play. It comes up with tails, an alternate set of variables will be set in motion. As the play progresses, every time something occurs that was determined by this coin toss, a tone will be heard. The tone will be heard. <laughs> will not stop performing when the tone is sounded. Characters in the play will continue in blissful ignorance without pause, but you in the audience will know that those particular moments could potentially have occurred differently or been omitted altogether with other moments in their place. Now I ask you to flip the coin. Do I catch it? Do I let it fall? Tails. Thank you. Good show. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. We confirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. There is a gigantic black billowing cloud I didn't know if we'd have time or if you even drink. 
I'm an alcoholic. That was a joke. I'm an advertiser. Of course I drink. It's in the job description. It's not anything special. It's just a cheap Syrah. No, I love Syrah. Are you kidding? I've been really getting into it lately because I'm so bored with Merlot, you know. Me too. Because it's like Merlot. Everywhere you go for the past 10 years, Merlot. So can you believe this? No. It feels like a weird dream. I was just in New York like two weeks ago. Really? Did you know anybody in there? I, uh, I don't think so. Around the planes? No. Or the Pentagon? No. Excellent. What are the odds of that I wonder? Not knowing anybody? Yeah. I mean, this must be a really hard day for Kevin Bacon. You know, because of the... Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so are you with from Minneapolis originally? All my life. You? Ever since I got out of college. I went to Carlton, down Northfield. Cool. Yep. The U. Excellent. I, I keep forgetting about the Pentagon. Totally. I remember when I first saw Jim McClazowski on NBC, and he was like, wait a second, Katie, I think an explosion just went off nearby. And I was thinking, right, you need to relax, Jim. Like, of course he thinks anywhere if something goes boom now, it's got to be more planes. And then it was. Who, who are you trying to call it, if I can ask? My sister, but she's not home. She's kind of a kook, and she's never home, and she doesn't have a cell phone. It's very annoying. So look, let me dry my hair and get ready, we can go. We don't really have to do this, you know. No, I want to. This will be a relief. I want to get out of here. I've been going nuts just sitting around. This is good. Okay. You can watch TV if you want. There's this great new show called Attack on America. It's really long. No, I, I see enough of that at the airport. Oh, uh, that CNN airport news? Yeah. Can't get away from the way they designed that place. No. So, yeah. I'll read. Or oh, you can look at my books. They're kind of neat. Maybe I'll do that. Excellent. seem kind of weird, but you like Trollope. Yeah, I do actually. See, no one reads Trollope besides me. No, I do. I read them all. See, me too. Really? Yeah, all of them. Don't just love the way it's all so mundane? Yeah. And the way he gets into the minority of life, all the little weirdnesses? Yeah, and you like Kerouac. Totally. And, and Elizabeth Bishop, and Marianne Moore. Yeah. And Joyce Carol Wills. Oh, her. Kind of. She's my great aunt. You're kidding me. No, her publisher sends me all her books, but I've never really read a single one of them. You should. She's really good. She's like my favorite author in the universe. This one I grabbed on the way out of my store tonight actually is her new one. That's some coincidence. That, that's nothing. Your whole bookshelf looks exactly like my bookshelf. Ikea? No, your books. <laughs> like the same books as me. The exact same books. Like, exactly. Really? Yeah, it, it just kind of freaked me out. That we have the same books. Yeah, which is why I love. I was wondering. But then I thought, that would seem weird. So, then I tried to come back in, but I couldn't because, you know. So, then I knocked, which was probably a mistake too. But, uh, now you're here, and I'm here, and I'm sorry, it was dumb. No, no, shut up. This is good. I can go now. When are you going to meet another girl who reached Cholo or is so cool? Okay. Excellent. So, look, I'm going to go finish up. I won't leave you. And honestly, you know, it wasn't a problem, but don't. I won't. You do have to tell me one thing, though. What? Are you always like this? Like how? Kinda goofy? I, uh, I don't think so. I think it's just today, and yesterday, these two days. I'm a little freaked out because of the whole... Thing? Right. Me too. Me too. I think it's the new American way. I used to wake up every morning and think, what am I gonna do? Today I woke up and thought, what's gonna happen to me? It's kinda different. Shit. You know what the problem with people is? What? They're not always there. Answer if that rings, okay? Sure. Actually, I'll just take it with me, because you know. Sure. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm really sorry, but... Oh, just yeah, it's probably wrong. It is. He lives on the hall. Okay. Excellent.
it's nobody, man. Don't even think like that. <laughs> Wine? I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. 
it. <laughs>
twins, like spooky twins, like make you believe in God twins, or, or stop, whichever. See them together, Wendy and Waverly, duplicates. I'm gonna go. Blind date? Cosmic shit? Yeah. Oh.
Hi, yeah, can we get two extra large thin crusts with sausage if it's that free range organic stuff? <laughs> Wicked. And uh, peppers and jalapenos on the whole thing. Boom. Thanks. <laughs> she had a super sexy voice. <laughs> well, I'm going to go over and wake up Nancy and get her over here. By the way, are you buying Blind Dick Boy? Yeah. Otherwise, I'll get some money in my apartment. No, I'm buying. You sure? I'll split it with you. No, I'm buying. Final answer? Final answer. <laughs> cool. <laughs> For a minute, I didn't know where that was going to fall. No, no, I'm saying. I'll be back. Okay. Seems decent. He is. I'm sorry, this isn't much of a date. Oh, don't even say something like that. Don't even think it. I, I feel bad just being here. Don't, it's all good. You seem like you could be okay. Thanks. You seem like you could be okay too. I'm really freaked out about my sister. I'm totally getting freaked out. Total waste of time. Right, that's what he says. But you should have seen him when he lost his Santana tickets during the Supernatural tour. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. He should turn up. Don't you think? She'll call. I don't know. I, I hope so. I don't want to be... I know. I know. It's good. I know what you mean. It's the right thing to say. It's good. <laughs> you could hold my hand for a second if you want to. Not a date kind of thing. Just as another person. If you wanted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> of something big being just around the corner has kind of become the status quo. Don't you, don't you think? Was that the wrong thing to say? No, totally. I was just processing. I mean, at least that's how they sell it to us in the book business. No, you're right. And mine too. Well, just look at the way the whole music industry is headed. That's the whole thing in a nutshell right there. What the hell does that mean? You know what I mean. No, I don't. And no one could possibly know what that meant. Do you know what that meant? Not really. See, what is it about the music industry? You know. That... No, I don't, Ron. What is there about the music industry that even remotely relates to this? Remotely. Remotely. I'm not even going to have this conversation with this level of resistance. <laughs> it's fine with me, too. That's fine with me, too. Fine. 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 Besides, you're way too freaked out about when to even have this conversation. You're right. I am. I'm too freaked out. You're right. I'm going to have some more pizza. I've been trying to watch my weight recently, but somehow now that feels kind of stupid, you know? <clears throat> Here, babe. I know, I know. I'm not even going to get into it. Oh, my. I'm going to take this in the other room. Let's go, you guys. Do what you gotta do. Guys, I'm afraid this is hard. Hello? I don't believe in God. Per se. You want some of this? No, thanks. I don't believe in God. Per se. But I still think prayer 
is really cool. It's like a way of moving energy around. You know what I'm saying? Ron? Can I be honest with you? Of course, of course. I don't really know what you're saying very often. <laughs> The psychic I went to the last time I was in New Orleans. I go down there every year with my friend with the Cajun catfish stand. He sets up deals with catfish distributors and we hang out at Galatoire's do the whole gumbo thing. And this psychic told me that I'm very sensitive to how energy moves. And that's why I'm a musician. But he also said that it make, uh, makes me very sensitive to the tunes of life. Which is all prayer really is. It's, it's got nothing to do with God or there being a God. That's what you said. Prayer isn't begging God for something. It's just listening to the secret unfolding music of life and playing your part. Because I'm a musician, I can do that. Like, like she said that I can hear things that other people can't. Like, like right now, I can hear something coming. Oh, there, there, did you hear that? That little dude! Oh, no. See, I did. <laughs> But you didn't hear that either, did you? No. That's what she meant. <laughs> sure, just tell me to take you to 455 School Street. It's in the Kenwood neighborhood. <coughs> right, Kenwood. He'll know where that is. It's just south of downtown. It's like a five minute drive from the hotel. <laughs> no, I know. It's a weird time, I know. It's all good. I have some friends over if that's okay with you. No, it's fine with me as long as it's okay with you. They're all pretty excellent people. This is great. This is excellent. I love this. I can't wait. <clears throat> this is a breath of fresh air. I know. I know. Me too. Okay. Bye. <laughs> oh my god. You'll never believe who that was. Who? Joyce Carol Oates. No. I know. I brought her book tonight. I know. She's my favorite author in the universe. I brought her book tonight, and now she's coming here? Mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> she was flying from Los Angeles, but her plane got diverted to Minneapolis after the... Thing. Yeah, and she's been sitting up in her hotel room, and she thought she'd give me a call. She's coming over. I'm gonna go. No, it's total fate you're here. Don't you realize how screwed I'd be if you weren't here? I've never read a single one of her books. She's not going to want to talk about her books. She's going to want to talk about the thing. Right. You guys don't think she'll be expecting me to mention something, if not anything at all, about the millions of books she's written? Like, such and such is one of my favorites, or anything like that? Well, just pick one and say it's your favorite. But Ron, I'll start a cascade and talk about the books. Haven't you ever had a conversation? Tell her you're blind. <laughs> <laughs> or workable. Shit. I think something like this will never happen, and then it happens. All the adverse forces are converging. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. So tell me what they're about. What? The books. Which ones? All of them. All of them? Yeah, just like a thumbnail sketch. Uh, Come on, she's on her way out the door, and she'll be here in like four minutes. Oh, uh, okay. Just the basics. Okay. Go! <laughs> Garden of Royal Delights. Uh, this is about a girl named Clara whose father's a migrant worker and life is really hard and all the men are jerks. See, that's too much. I'll never remember all this stuff. What? Just tell me the basics. Like the basics, basics of the basics. I'm trying. I know, and I appreciate it. Really, I do. Just fucking simplify a little bit, please. Okay. Uh, expensive people, suburban murder, uh, them, race. Like a race? No, like race. I'd like to read a book about a race. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Crunch! Uh, Wonderland, it's about a guy named Jesse, that's all that matters. I can't, I, I can't. It's, it's about a girl named Elena whose life gets flipped all upside down with this wild relationship with this guy. Sorry. Uh, the Assassins, Cody's dead, now what? Exactly! Run! Uh, Belfort, this is another one of my favorites. Hurry up! I'm trying, it, it's gothic, there's vampires, and a guy who flies a plane to a house. I only mention that because she might bring it up because of the thing. Right. Thank you. Uh, Angel Fight, it's Agamemnon, but in a made up world. A Bloodsport Romance, it's uh, it's very antique, and it's, it starts with a woman getting kidnapped in a black balloon. Um, uh, Mr. Isn't looking her. Uh, this book is insane. It, it's like three detective stories, one with one romance, and it all takes place in 19th century America. 19th century America? That's my time! That's Rip Van Winkle time! Ron, everywhere you go, it's Rip Van Winkle time. <laughs> You're right. Your point is strong. 
strong. <laughs> <laughs> I walk my door and myself. I wipe on in the 1800s falls ill. It's black. I heard divines why the wrist stick. Wait! Um, because you have to keep watching these towers fall down. down. It's like it's fine. always uh, happening. I don't even know what now is anymore. Is anymore. So we're not a stitch uh, these towers into a fucking kimono. Fuck! Please, please, please! Will you shut the fuck up? My great aunt Joyce Carol Oates is coming over, and I haven't read a single one of her million freaking books! Go! I'm oh, sorry. Foxfire, uh, girl gangs, 1950s, zombie, sex killer. A Harley Bear, 19th century America, blonde, Marilyn Monroe, and uh, middle age. Everyone dies, and someone dies, and everyone has to look at their life in a brand new way. Oh my god, I got through. It's ringing. I haven't heard the phone ring for the past day and a half. It's the machine. Oh my god, she sounds just like me. That never doesn't surprise me. Wendela? 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 Wendell, it's Waverly. I love you, I love you, I love you, and I hope you're okay. Please call me right away when you get this message, or email me at my email address and let me know what's go going on. Mom and I are going nuts just waiting to hear from you. Please, please, please call us right away. We love you more than anything in the world. Okay, bye. She's not there. But you got through. That's a big step. I know, step. Ron. But she's not there. That means the lines are opening up again. I know, Ron, but she wasn't there. Well, not now, maybe, but... I know, but the thought of her never picking up that message, of that apartment sitting empty until Mom and I have to go clean it out, and then we play back that message and remember that she wasn't there when I left it, that no one was ever going to be there? I know. Wait. The lines are opening up, see, and... Wherever she is, she's that much more likely to get through, calling you. I mean, she lives down in the village, right? Right. Well, that whole fucking area has probably been evacuated. You don't know. She could be staying uptown with friends, trying to call you. Every time you pick up to call her, she could be trying to call you. I mean, <laughs> she probably is. You're twins. It could be a twin moment. Exactly. This could be a massive series of fucking twin moments, like that time you both went to Jerry Maguire. I guess. And, like you said, she didn't even work in the World Trade Center. And it's whack. Totally, totally whack. She might. What? She might work at the World Trade Center. Why would you say that? Because I just know she might. What does that mean, I just know she might? I'm do you know my sister? I'm trying to tell you. Don't freak out with it. Let him talk. Ron, don't tell me not to freak out. Well, I went to New York two weeks ago to visit a friend of mine who just started working at the Manhattan School of Music. Yeah, and? And one night I went to a bar up on 125th, and I think I met your sister there. Oh my god, why didn't you tell me that? Because I didn't know until I saw you tonight. What does that mean? It means I didn't know until I walked in the door and saw your face, then heard from you that you had a sister, and then heard from Ron from you were twins. I didn't know. I, I've been putting it together piece by piece. Okay, so what makes you think she just might work at the World Trade Center? That still doesn't make any sense. Well, well, my friend was off on the sidewalk doing this thing where people hold hands and get shocked by an electric generator. This friend of mine, <laughs> I mean, this girl who came up to me who looked just like you and said hi. And uh, we talked, and during the course of conversation, she said that she had been <clears throat> going to the Fashion Institute of Technology, and she was a year away from graduating. But uh, she'd been offered this job as a fashion writer for this new magazine that had their offices in the World Trade Center. She said that it would mean quitting school if she took the job, but she didn't know if she wanted to take it or not because it would mean quitting school and her mom would lend her all this money. But she really did think it was a good opportunity. Excellent. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. No, but it's all good. I'm going to get my mom on the phone and we'll get her back on our hotline and we'll figure this out. I'm sorry. I didn't would you stop you. it? But would you stop it? Andrew, stop saying you're sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. Shit, I never heard anything about this from her, and she tells me everything, so I don't think she did it. But she did like seem like she was gonna... Like... I know, but you don't know her, and I do. She changes her mind about every 13 seconds. She's a total wacko. And if she had taken this job, I would have heard about it. And I didn't. So if that's a one possible reason she might be down there, and we roll that out, then everything's fine. Everything's gonna be okay. Shit, Mom, get off the phone! Look, maybe you should just go now. Go? Yeah, I'm going to get my mom on the phone any time soon. I need time soon now, and I'm not going to be much company. But there's one more thing I want to... What? 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 Look, don't worry about it. I'll just tell Gerald it was a weird night. The World Trade Center fell down. Or I could tell him about the night. Whatever. I hope 
hope she's okay. I know. You know that, don't you? How much I hope she's okay? I know, and I'm sure she is, really. It's all good. It's good you were here. It's good you told me what you told me. It's all good. Oh my god. Joyce Carol Oates is outside my door. All right, excellent. Andrew? Yeah? Stay here. We'll figure this out. I'm just a little freaked out, okay? Okay. Ron? Don't work. Can you keep peeking me down so I can see my mom? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Great. And Nancy, I know we're not really friends or anything, but could you cover your vagina, please? <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Everybody, try and be normal. <laughs> Good evening. For those of you who are seated late or don't remember, I'm Erin Moore, the stage manager for recent tragic events. As you recall, before the play began, a volunteer from the audience flipped a coin to determine the course of the play. And I told you that whenever something happened that was determined by that random flip of the coin, the tone would sound. <laughs> remember? Yes. 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 Well, of course, that was a lie. I'm not a stage manager. I'm an actor, and this is the play. And the truth is, as many of you probably figured out, then in Act 1, the tone of chance, remember that, was sounded whenever the playwright indicated it should be sounded. And everything that happened on stage only happened because that was the only way it ever could happen. For my part in this subterfuge, I would apologize. However, I'm not even in control of my own actions. The words I'm speaking now, in fact, are scripted. See? The words I'm speaking now, in fact, are scripted. It's right there. Anyway, I tell you all this by way of informing you that the remainder of the play has no pretentious chance at all. Everything you're about to see can only ever happen one way. No matter how free the characters might seem, they never are. They're trapped, and nothing they do can stop recent tragic events from proceeding toward its predetermined conclusion. Predetermined, of course, because it's already been written. And speaking of written, the author, Joyce Carol Oates, about whom the characters have been speaking, is not, I repeat, is not THE Joyce Carol Oates. She's an entirely fictitious author named Joyce Carol Oates that has happened, by chance, to write a massive body of work that just so happens to correlate word for word with the works of the real Joyce Carol Oates. <laughs> is this plausible? No. But it's mathematically possible. In fact, this kind of winning phenomenon in a truly random and infinite universe is inevitable. And it's upon this slim foundation the playwright has created the character. However, just so nobody gets the idea that the Joyce Carol Oates portrayed in this play is supposed to be THE Joyce Carol Oates, the part will be played by a sack of it, operated by the actress playing Nancy. Here's Nancy and the puppet. Right here. <laughs> So when you see this puppet on the end of Nancy's hand, don't be fooled. She will be making its mouth move with her fingers, and she will be speaking for it. Hello. <laughs> when all these mechanisms are working together, you'll know that this puppet stands for the fictitious Joyce Carol Oates. Got it? No. It's just a puppet. Again, let me admit, this is a highly enlightened character, but then look at religion. Representative democracy, starfish, the human eye, look at your own highly unlikely life. Who among us could ever guess that the chain of millions of inevitable moments that constitute our lives would bring us to this moment now? Well, it's baffling complexities and strange sensations of freedom. <clears throat> Recent tragic events, Act 2. Waverly, Andrew, Ron, and Nancy are present. Also, Joyce Carol Oates. The time is now or later. Having contact with Waverly's mother and relating the news of Andrew's revelation, Waverly and everyone assembled are still waiting to hear from Waverly's mother, waiting to hear whether Wendy was, in fact, employed by any company in either the North or South Tower of the World Trade Center. Lights up.
Loads just said she has to pee. <laughs> Why did you say that? Because, honey, I have to pee. Who's <laughs> calling so clockworky? I'm sorry. I thought I said you danced. Uh, no. I did it? Sorry. I did it? No. You get up and dance when you have to pee. This is Wendy's favorite rule. You get up and dance like this because it makes you pee. Wendy loves vicious circles. And Jose Cuervo. Oh, honey, I didn't know. <laughs> can I go pee now? Nancy, can you show where the bathroom is? <laughs> Personally, I'm glad you said something, Miss Oates. I was beginning to feel like a fucking Quaker. I was thinking that too. Have you ever read Magnet by John Foles? No. Oh, it's this really great book about Sitting there oh. all quiet like that. Miss um, Oates! Yes! <laughs> I don't want to waylay you on your way to your wee wee, but it is so cool that you are this nationally recognized literary figure and you brought beer. Thanks, Ron. Because I'm gonna just. Uh, I have been thinking this out. So when I first heard you were here, please God, let her be cool. And even if she's isn't cool, let her bring beer. And then you the Pacific Coast, and you're so cool. And I was like, fuck. I'm so gonna read all her books now. They are really good. Yeah, that's what I heard. I learned to always bring beer from John Updike. The John Updike? No. Another author named John Updike. Yeah. The John Updike. <laughs> we were at the PEG conference about 20 years ago, and he brought a case of Miller High Life up to Arthur Miller's hotel room one night as a joke. It was brilliant. Sammy Rushdie stopped by and got completely schnockered. You know Salman Rushdie? <laughs> yeah. He's a darling man, so principled. He's still on the run, sort of, from those guys. That must be so weird for him. Anyway, ever since then, it's always been my rule of thumb. Wherever I go, bring beer. <laughs> well, way to pick up the ball and run with it. You totally rock. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I'm just, I'm going to go pee now. Do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that seems like a million years ago. 
Speaking of which, I totally don't ever want to go to work tomorrow. Me neither. The thought of ever giving a shit again about advertising is completely beyond me at this point. Ron, if I do, if I ever go back to being how I was before yesterday, just shoot me. Amen. Amen. Anything you say you give a shit about, fuck it. You just gotta treat it like it's all a fucking game. That's how I've always played it. I know. Wendy too. It's just taken me a while to realize it. Just fuck it. She stood there the whole time I went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> stand for the AIDS ride, and he says it's really fucking amazing. I told you, we already ate the... Mom? Yeah, it's me. What's the deal? She's on some list of employees, but there's no record that she was there yesterday morning. My mom's supposed to be getting a call from someone at the office. You know what I mean, not at the office, because the office isn't there anymore. But someone in charge will know for sure. They seem to think pretty close to definitely she wasn't there. Well, that's fucking great! I know. Yeah, that's good news. I know. So where is she? <coughs> She's, uh, out there... Handing out donuts, you know, helping out. And not calling home at all? Would you wave with all this shit that's going on down there? Would that be the first thing that would be on your mind? I... I don't know. And she's twice as crazy as you are. You're right. For all we know, she could be out there with friends. It's a war zone. Who knows? She could be out with friends getting totally stoned out of her mind. I mean, that's what I do. You're right. Stoned. Okay, you're right. You should get stoned right now. Do you get high in the soaps? Oh, I used to run. You know, it just gives me a headache now. You know what's good for that? Okay, resuming play. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah? Are you sure you want to keep playing? Yeah. Are you sure? Because. No, it's totally fine. Everything's good. We're going to hear from my mom any second that Wendy definitely, absolutely wasn't there yesterday morning. And I'm going to burst into tears, and everything's going to be fine. And until then, as far as I'm concerned, it's Wendy's night. And we'll play Wendy's game and just think about her. Do what she would do. Do what she's probably doing right now, right? Right. It'll be a twin moment. <clears throat> until then, when we hear from my mom or Wendy, I'll deal. And I'll deal. And we'll all just deal. Okay? Rock on! Okay, resuming play. The wave! Now! Yeah. Seven string four. That's two to you, and... You can point me two inches, free country. Tell that to fucking Mamiya. Uh, he had a choice. That we can point again, right? Not much of one. Yeah, we can point until somebody fucks up. Are you familiar with the facts of that case? <laughs> then I'm gonna start pointing a lot. I have <laughs> a lot of articles. Really? Because he had a few more choices than you might think, Ron. Nine, skip three. Miss Oates, can I ask you a question? Of course. 
can't believe I'm talking to Joyce Carol Oates. Believe it, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in free will? Hmm. Do you? Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I don't know. Nine skip three. I don't know. Three to you. Three to you. Oh, you pointed. You have to drink a shot. <laughs> Ron, we can point until somebody fucks up. You drink a shot. Fuck! I knew you'd be the one to fuck up this time. I could just feel it. Drink, drink, motherfucker, drink, motherfucker, drink, drink, motherfucker, drink, drink, motherfucker, drink, motherfucker, drink, motherfucker. Okay. No more pointing, starting now. Nah. I mean, ever since yesterday morning, everything feels a little like, of course. You know what I mean? Of course. Yes, of course. Two. King's give two. No one has a king. Jinx! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! You owe me a coke. You were trying to jinx me. Yes, I was. Why would you do that? Because <laughs> I wanted a coke. <laughs> Serious? No. I did it to torment you. <laughs> what do you think? I wanted the coke. <laughs> I, I owe you a coke. Certify, certify. It's certified. You owe me a coke. Miss Oates, as I was saying before I was ambushed was ever since yesterday morning when I turned on my compu computer and saw a picture on AOL. Fucking AOL, man. What do you expect? Of the planes inside the burning buildings. I don't know why, but all I could think of was, of course. As though you'd known it was going to happen? No, but it fits somehow. Each give one. Like it fit. Each drink one. And never since then, everything sort of seemed to fit. I mean, of course I went to school with Jared Itner, right? Two drink two. And of course Waverly knows him too. And of course we both managed to stay friends with him, even though he has this annoying English accent that no one else can bear. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I went to New York and met Wendy because another friend of mine had to change his life and become a music teacher after being a stockbroker. He had no choice. He was doomed by his own integrity to do that. And of course I show up tonight, and of course you reach Trope, and the most perfect girl I've ever met. Four is drink four. No one has a four. I mean, Wendy was just as beautiful, of course, but way too wild for me. I mean, I hardly knew her, but I could tell by some of the things she said that she was out there. She's out there? So you're asking, is that all chance? I'm saying, I don't know where a chance to stop and the choice to start. Five skip four. Oh, uh, you pointed, you have to drink a shot. No, no, two to you, and two to you. Dude. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> You're the one, man. You're the one. Drink, drink motherfucker, drink, 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 motherfucker. Are you sure you shuffled this deck? Uh, yeah, sweet nectar. <laughs> okay, two rules. No more right-handed drinking as of now. Yeah, now. Next stop, total silence. Six is skip three. I mean, if all those moments are connected, then, then aren't all moments connected? Don't they have to be? And, and if they are, then where's the free will? Where's the room for it? The moments are only connected in your mind. What? Seven string two. Well, the moments are only connected because you choose to see them that way. But You're the one creating the perception of inevitability because it suits your purposes for some reason, not but the other way around. Miss Oates. I think what you're asking is a very good question, Andrew, but it can lead to some very dangerous, dangerous ethical conclusions. Miss Oates. Yes. You have to forgive me, but I passionately fucking disagree with you. <laughs> oh, I'm no stranger to conflict. Let's go then. Let us go then. Fine. Fine. <laughs> this morning, I was watching TV, and Katie Couric was interviewing this fireman. Ten string two. Are you sure you shuffled this deck? Yeah. And she was being, like, all meaningful, and she asked him, could you possibly explain what it feels like to be searching through this rubble for your friends? And I wanted him to say so bad. I don't know, Katie. Could you tell us what it feels like to know that your husband's dead? But no. He said, oh, you know, we're all doing our best. You know, Katie, we're working out there with broken hearts. <laughs> broken hearts. And you don't think his heart was actually broken? No, he's a fireman. You know what I'm saying? He's a tough customer. And even if his heart was broken, he wouldn't say it. But now here he was on TV, and he says broken heart because he has already agreed in his mind to let himself be scripted by this media machine. And, that, and this media machine wants to con us all into thinking that we're surprised. Oh, and you weren't surprised. 
by, by what happened yesterday? You weren't surprised? Because I was. I, I noticed it. I noticed it happened. Don't get me wrong, it was new information. But there's a difference between knowing when something's going to happen and acting like it's a surprise. I mean, come on. When you take a shit in the is it a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. No, no, you never know when exactly you're going to have to take a shit. But when you do, it's not a surprise. It's inevitable. You eat, you shit. I eat, I shit. We eat, we shit. And I know it sounds like I'm being cynical, Miss Oates, but this is my point. What's really cynical, it seems to me, is this. Take a country with the most hyperthyroid self-concept in history. Kick everyone else's ass for 150 years. Help to plant a bunch of people on the other side of the world in the middle of a land where nobody likes them just because you feel bad that you didn't do anything about the Holocaust until it was too late. Then piss all over anyone in the Middle East who complains about it. Build a pair of ultra fucking tall buildings, taller than almost like fucking anything, <laughs> in the most prominent city in the world to do nothing to protect them in the air. From in a world of billions of assholes, and then act like it's a surprise when something bad happens. Like, ooh, mm, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. You got peanut butter in my chocolate. <laughs> and then sell this fake surprise all over the airwaves to a bunch of people who are so dead inside they can't cry until they watch 5,000 people die on TV. That's fucked up. That's cynical. Okay, Jack's drink three. Don't quote me. I think it's a far cry, though, Ron, from this political determinism you're describing and taking the next step and saying there's no such thing as free will. Is it a far cry, Miss Oates? Is it the farthest cry? I think it is, Ron. Please drink four. See, I was on a plane yesterday while you were watching TV with your fashionable determinism. I was on a plane. King's drink two. And when the pilot made the announcement, there had been a directive given from the FAA, and would be landing in Minneapolis instead of New York, the man next to me started to cry. He just drink three. A, a grown man. Two, two, two. Before we even knew what was happening, he started to cry, just from a sense of pure helplessness. He just drink one. Something was wrong, and he couldn't do anything about it, and he cried. Forced drink one. That's how he felt on that plane, and all we were doing was landing in a different city. Imagine how the people must have felt in those planes, or in those buildings, in those last terrible moments when they saw the planes coming. That's what's terrible. Not that they died, because, frankly, everybody dies. The terrible part is knowing that it's coming for such an awful reason, and you can't do anything to stop it. The people who died in those planes are gone, but the cloud of horror and dread that came pouring off of them in their final moments, that very real, almost I don't know, pornographic awareness that we live in a world almost completely beyond our control? Well, that's still here. It's everywhere. Everywhere I've been today, I've felt it. I, I feel it here right now. And that's the terrible part. Because where does that energy go? Where does that human dread go as it comes pouring off those doomed souls? It goes into us. It settles slowly down across our land like a menacing fog, and it goes into us. And that's why Andrew feels the way he feels, I think. That's why you feel the way you feel, Ron. Because you're both too daunted by the terrible facts of this horrible situation to do anything in response. But that kind of abdication is a lie. We're all as free today as we've ever been. We're perfectly and absolutely free. I've got to go. But, Miss Oates. What you just said doesn't make any sense. No, Ron. What you're saying doesn't make any sense. You sure you have to go? You can't stay till Wendy calls? No, Waverly, I'm sorry. I have to get back and get some rest. I have to be at the airport very early tomorrow. The lines are just going to be... Miss Oates! Ron, this event is huge and daunting and terrifying, but I'm sorry. It doesn't change the fact that everything about my experience tells me that I'm free. And everything about it tells me that I'm not. <laughs> Miss Oates. And listen, this has been absolutely a blessing. I know. For me, too. I'm so glad you called. Miss Oates. Look, Ron, you're choosing to say what you're saying to me right now, aren't you? You're choosing to say Miss Oates. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just say what comes into my head. Oh, true. come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Because that's what Jesus told the apostles. He said, 
when they bring you before the authorities, just say whatever comes into your head. <laughs> um, are you a Christian? That's not the point. Are you, are you not a practicing Christian? Of course not. Then isn't that a rather disingenuous position to take? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I just take the positions that I'm stuck with. So you're a puppet? No! <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me, Ron. It sounds like you think you're a puppet. No, I think I'm a human being. Then act like one. Make a choice. Because human beings are free. That's what makes them human. But They're free to make choices. Free to say this or that, and free to do this or that. Free to fly planes into buildings, and free to help people who get hurt when it happens. But it's Without it's freedom, there's no such thing as human nature. But Without no. freedom, there's no such thing as love. No! Because of love, there's no such thing as freedom! Stop it! Try to keep that in mind. Nancy, we really haven't had a chance to talk, probably because I've been talking so much, but it's been a pleasure meeting you. Ron, you're truly a menace and I love it. Right back at you. But Katie Kirk's a friend of mine, and she's had a real hard time, and you ought to think twice before you say things like that. You're right. The point is strong. Now you call me at the hotel the minute you hear from Wendy, okay? I will. And and the next time we're together it'll be under much better circumstances. I hope so. I know so. Miss Oates. I, I'm sorry, Andrew. I really go, have just, to go. Just let me say one more thing. I mean, I respect you so much. What if a person felt compelled, kind of like what Ron said, but not by love, but by something simpler, a desire to do good, to do something good? Andrew, I have to go. Just let me finish, please. What if a person felt compelled by this desire to do something good, but they didn't know how it was going to turn out, and it ended up having a surprisingly bad or unexpected outcome? Is that freedom? Is that really freedom? when you can't help but do something even though you don't know how it's going to turn out? Andrew, <clears throat> I mean this in the best possible way. We really don't know each other well enough to be having this kind of conversation. <laughs> it wouldn't be respectful or responsible of me to allow it to continue. You understand? You're right. I'm sorry, Miss so Oates. I'm sorry. It's okay. Good night, Waverly. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. It was a pleasure meeting you all. I like your books. <laughs> <laughs> She was super sexy. <laughs> yeah, man! It's not all about the looks. Don't be so Burt Reynolds. <laughs> She's obviously got a very big vision. It's wrong, but it's very big. And that's so sexy. Look, Wave Machine. Yeah? If it's okay with you, I think we're gonna head out too. Why? You sure? There's more beer. No, no more beer. No more beer. We're heading home. Now I'm taking this little no underwear wearing honey back to my crib with me. Look, sorry <laughs> I kind of got into it with your famous, you know. Oh, it's all right. Sure? You're not upset about that thing she said about Katie Kirk, are you? No. I'm just tired. I'm just really tired. You're not going to, are you? I, uh, uh, whatever, I'm here. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you came by. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's okay. No. No. I mean, trust my powers. <laughs> and Nancy, we didn't really get to talk or anything. I'm leaving my husband, and Ron's just a friend. That's the whole story. <laughs> Look, uh, whatever happens, you call us or come over and tell us, okay? I will. Rock. You rock. You rock. Wendy rocks. No, you rock. You're like a constellation, isn't she? As far as I can tell, yeah. It only gets better from here, man. You look long enough and you start seeing all kinds of beautiful stars. Thank you.
let's not let these motherfuckers keep us from being Americans. <laughs> <laughs> or what that means. Alright, what is now, Jay's amigos? To all the ships at sea, good night. Good night. I could go too, if you want. No, no, please. Please stay. Question. Yeah? Do you want to talk about something else? Oh, please. God, yes. What? How did you get into trouble? Oh, God. I don't know. A friend of mine gave me the last powerful of bar set, and then I read Bar Chest of Powers, and then it was one right after another. I was hooked. I gave two years of my life to those books. I'd go, come home from work, and going out wasn't even a question. I'd just hop into bed and read. Well, which one's your favorite? The way we live now. What's yours? The way we live now. Huh. I guess it is clearly the best. Clearly. That's not some sign or coincidence that we're magnificently compatible or anything. No. It's just clearly <laughs> the best one. Have you ever read Proust? You know, I haven't. I've thought about it. And I think I read the first 50 pages three times. Well, you should read it. It's got a lot of the same thing going on. Yeah? Yeah, it, it, it has the same cumulative effect, you know? All the little people do their thing and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, if you wanted, you could tell me something to read, and you could read Swan's Way, and we could talk about both of the books, if you wanted. Excellent. I can get it to you for free, too. I'm the bookstore guy. Oh, I can buy it. That's okay. No, let me buy it for you. Please. Okay. You have to read Their Eyes Are Watching God. All right. You haven't read it? No, I I've seen it on the shelf, but I've never picked it up. She's... She <clears throat> I thought you were going to say you already read it. No. She's a wonderful writer. That's what I've heard. Books are good. Yeah. They are. They're so good. Yeah. I'm a little scared. Me too. I mean, what if, what if this all happens again somewhere else tomorrow? And the next day? And the next day? There's no reason to think that this is the end. No, you're right. This could happen every day. You're right. <clears throat> I feel very, very, very unsafe. Do you want to, I mean, if you're too drunk to drive or whatever, you can spend the night on my couch. Do you want me to? Do you want to? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. You know, Gerald told me you'd be like this. Like how? Wishy-washy. I am. I was going to say I'm not, but I am. It's not just you. I am wishy-washy. I kind of like it. He told me you were smashing. Of course. He said you were terribly, terribly smashing. <laughs> I don't know how I stayed friends with him. <laughs> Me neither. He's all right, though. Yeah. He's kind of funny. Yeah. I guess that's how people stay friends with him. 
I'm so sorry it happened. I've just been a little freaked out by the way everything's sort of working. What is it? Well, everything happened exactly like I said, and this not, might, might not even matter to you at all, but it, it matters to me. Everything happened exactly like I said when I met at the bar, except... Except what? Except she didn't kind of just tell me she was taking the dub. She kind of asked me for Advice? it. Advice? Yeah. Typical. She said that talking to strangers is like flipping a coin, and that tonight I was her coin. That's so Wendy. And she told me the whole story and said, should I take the job? And you said, yes. Yeah. And now my sister might be dead. Yeah. Do you know what it's like to have a twin? No. No, you don't. Because it's really different from not having one. It's so much different and better, you can't even imagine. And if something's happened to her, you don't know, I'm totally screwed. Because all my life, there have been parts of myself I haven't looked at, Things I wanted to do and haven't done because I knew Wendy would do them. So I never had to be wild. I never had to go nuts and be put away in some hospital. I never had to do those things because I knew she would do them. And then she and I would hook up again, and we'd stay up all night and talk, and it would all be integrated. We'd be a whole person together. She's my twin. So I went to college while she went to Europe, and I've always had my shit together, and she's always been a wreck. And I'd go into this office every day with cubicles and jerk guys, smile, smile, and the stupid campaigns, stupid clients, people calling me at Sunday night just as I'm finally getting out of the office, calling from LA to tell me the ad for the rebroadcast of some Eddie Murphy movie on the USA Network just isn't exactly what they were hoping for. So I put my bag down, I sit down, and I call the poor super writer home, and I try to make it work. And if Ron calls me and he needs something, I try to make it work. I spend all day, every day, trying to make it work for everyone. And sometimes I do get a little mad and think, why can't I be the one who's a mess and has all the fun? But I don't know what to do if she isn't around, you know. I don't know what I'll do. <sighs> See, now that'll be Ron. Why did you even tell me that? Because I had to. I had to. Hey. Her husband's on the phone. <laughs> and he's crying because the World Trade Center fell down and he's an architect. I guess it's a really sad day for architects. <laughs> Is she going to go back to him? I hope not. She left him because he said he couldn't stand to look at her body. It wasn't perfect enough. Her body's fine. Tell her. You kind of have a thing for her, don't you? Yeah. Kind of do. She's quiet, but she's got a lot going on. Like, there's a whole other and I like her. Do you want to come in? We're just sitting here, coming apart the scenes. <laughs> yeah. But I also wanted to know if you still have that foot bath that your mom left last Christmas. My feet are killing me. <laughs> yeah, it's under the sink in the bathroom. Come on in. Thanks. By the way, thanks for the pizza. Anytime. I meant to say that earlier. That was really gracious. No problem. Yesterday, we have significant new deals, details to report. 
uh, late this afternoon in Lower Manhattan. I'll you heard just a few minutes ago, years. those of you who are on the full network, about the remaining portions of the South yeah, Tower right. at the World Trade Center right. coming down. Uh, uh, this caused a serious measure of concern. One could add uh, uh, in certain well, parts of South New York, which people did not understand time. completely what was happening. But what you're looking at here is the evacuation of the rest of the workers today. Lights 137 go. Sound 135 go. Lights 131 go. The investigators believe they've identified all 12 of the people who had an air of cosmic disgust and several people in Florida and in the Boston area have been detained and certainly questioned in connection with the attack.